Hello, assalamu alaikum, and welcome to this video. Thank you for clicking onto it. So recently I have done some Q&A videos where I've asked you to ask me some questions on my Instagram and I've really enjoyed answering them. I had one question that came through that I felt like needed its own video because it was a big question and I think perhaps something that's not spoken about a lot. And that is how to get over masjid anxiety or how to deal with anxiety and worries about going to the mosque. And you know, this is a really real thing, especially for us revert Muslims. And I would say for women, even more than men. And I also don't want to think that if you're born Muslim, you know how to go to a mosque, okay? Because I've had plenty of people message me on Instagram to say that me going to mosques has like inspired them or given them some information. Because even though they're a born Muslim, it's like that maybe they didn't grow up in that area or grow up going to mosques so I still feel like it's helpful for born Muslims and still helpful for men but I do think that it is a topic of anxiety and worry that women and revert Muslim women face mostly. Now if you're new to my channel then I became Muslim in August 2020 alhamdulillah and that was during the high time of lockdown so I didn't really get to go to a mosque that much but I have been to quite a few mosques in my travels in the past before becoming Muslim and then when I did become Muslim I moved to Turkey and I went to quite a few mosques there especially in Istanbul and since moving to Manchester Chester with lockdowns eased I have been to a couple of mosques here so I'm definitely not a pro at going to mosques but I've been to my fair share I would say and I've definitely picked up some things that have been really helpful for me and have encouraged me to go and helped me go which is what I want to share with you today. Now my biggest and first tip I guess is basically just that you have to be brave. You really do have to be brave and just go that one time and know that once you've been that one time, once you've worked things out, it will be better when you go again. And of course, the more regularly that you go, the more regularly that you know the community, it will get easier. It is nerve wracking. And so you really do just have to be brave and go for it. So now in terms of going to a mosque near where you live, whether that's the UK or any other country, um, I guess I am gonna be focusing on the UK because obviously that's where I live right now and what I know most. And we are very lucky here, alhamdulillah, that there are so many Muslims here in the UK. And there are a lot of mosques even though some of them are, they're not the grand mosques that you see in Arab countries and Asian countries, um, mostly just like community centers, old churches, or even sometimes people's houses or what was someone's house, um, but they are around here in the UK. Now what I found most helpful in the UK, even in a small town where my mum lived in London, when I lived in Cardiff and also now here in Manchester, is to have a look at the mosque's website. Now not all mosques are going to have a website, especially if they're smaller ones, but if they're a little bit bigger then they are going to have a website and hopefully an Instagram account as well. And what I found is that just by emailing them on normally just like an info at mosque email or by messaging them on um, Instagram. It's helped me kind of tell, ask some questions and also tell them that I'm coming. So for example, the best example of this probably is that before I did my Shahada, I got in touch with the mosque near my mum's house because this was during lockdowns and so I wanted to know if Jummah prayer was on and if it was open to women because this was at the time where a lot of, um, there was quite hard restrictions and women weren't allowed in a lot of the mosques because of the space. So I just emailed them to ask them that question. I explained that I you know, wasn't Muslim yet and then they kind of told me that yeah, their women's area wasn't open but I was welcome to come in, see the mosque and have a chat with them. And we arranged a time, we arranged it just after Jummah and when I got to the mosque at that time there was someone there to meet me. Now for me that was really really helpful and it was it's something that I would really really recommend you to do as well and especially as a woman um, trying to look for mosques you know sometimes there's a women's area it's a completely different room it's a completely separate entrance sometimes it's just at the back and then normally what I've found in the UK if there's a separate room for women that's open during Jummah when more women go but in normal prayer times because of the amount of you know, people, men and women that don't really go, then women will tend to pray at the back. So it can be quite worrying and hard to work out 
what's going on just that on that first visit. So I would suggest, you know, messaging the mosque, email or Instagram or Facebook, um, and just asking them just little questions like that, which basically bring up a conversation. <laughs> and then maybe someone will be ready to meet you. So it's nice if someone is expecting you. So that's the biggest tip that I've got. Um, and that's happened to me a couple of times. And I also just want to say as well that although I do have like a presence online and followers and stuff, like when I first contacted this mosque, it was just off my private email, my private Facebook. So um, there was no good deals just because I don't share anything on Instagram or anything like that. And on the note of Facebook and looking online, what I would also recommend doing is looking out for any Facebook groups. Um, and then, you know, you can see if there's any men or women, depending on what your gender is, you know, who go and maybe you can meet up with them. For example, when I moved here to Manchester, I really wanted to go to Didsbury Mosque because I'd heard really good things about it, the really good um, revert community. And I was ready to go like Thursday night. I was like, I'm going to go to Jumma the next day. Um, and I actually had a message from one of the sisters who've been following me. She's also a revert Muslim. And she'd been to um, Didsbury quite a few times because she lives in the area. And she just asked me, do I want to meet her there? And then we can go in together. And since then, I've met a couple of sisters and we've just gone to Jumma together. Sometimes we've gone for a coffee afterwards. Sometimes it's, you know, just been Jumma and go. Um, and that for me, it really, really helped me go that first time. I think Facebook groups are really good idea and way to see other revert sisters, especially if you're a woman who live in your area, who you can perhaps get in contact with. Um, so that's also like just trying to kind of meet someone there for the first time at the right time, go in, they can kind of show you where you put your shoes, the entrance, that kind of thing, which are all really simple things. But the problem is, is that when you go for the first time, it is just really nerve wracking. I totally get it. So going with someone is just a good idea. Another little tip and something that I've definitely realized after going to Jumma a little bit later, a couple of times, because it is quite hard to actually just to work out like when Jumma prayer starts and when the hukbah before starts. But either way, I would just recommend giving yourself a lot of time if you are planning to go to Jumma, because often it gets really, really busy outside with people parking, especially here in the UK. Um, and then you go in and it's very busy. And so I would definitely recommend getting that early especially on your first time just maybe even just get there like super super early you know and then you can get a place there might be also more possibility for you to speak to some of the staff because I have realized as well that in um, the mosques that have a completely separate women's entrance that are you know a bigger kind of mosque you know there are women on the entrance there are sisters who work there and so it is nice for you to then be able to chat to people be comfortable um, and the same with the men's side of course I assume I don't know I haven't been there for Jumma but I assume, um, and I know it gets very, very busy. Actually, as a man, you should definitely get to Jumma even earlier because men's areas are obviously always completely busy um, and women's areas, depending on the area and the women that come a little bit quieter, but still often busy. Um, so if you are just a bit nervous for Jumma, then definitely get there early. Now, my final piece, and this is more aimed at the women just because again, I don't really know what it's like for men and I think men can pretty much wear what they want for for prayer time as long as they're covered. But I think it's a little bit more important to talk about it as a woman and maybe something that you're gonna be a bit more nervous about just like I have in the past for what to wear to the mosque. Um, and you know, I think what I've really enjoyed actually, and this is something that I've been wanting to try and share on my Instagram, but I just haven't found like a way to say it, is that going to the mosque here in Manchester recently has been really interesting because, you know, you really see a range of women's dress style there. You know, you see some women that, you know, do get really dressed up for Jumma as, you know, is suggested and they're in more, maybe more um, cultural clothing for them. And then other women who perhaps, you know, are, are working, they're just coming in on their lunch break. I guess what I'm trying to say is like, you just see a really range of women, like, different hijab styles, different colors, you know, some people in a bias, some people not, some people in head um, prayer dresses. And it's just really, really interesting. But I guess on the point of what to wear to the mosque, just so you feel a bit more comfortable, and then hopefully that in turn will ease the anxiety. At least that's what happens with me. Um, 
you know, just make sure that you do wear something fully covering, um, you know, something a little bit more baggier, whether that's a long maxi skirt, or if you're gonna wear like trousers or jeans, just so wear something more covering over your um, bum and the tops of your legs. Now, one of the things that I found most handy with kind of how to dress at the mosque and making sure I did feel comfortable and I was fully covered, is just buying a an abaya. I bought a really cheap one from like a street side market in London for £10, a black one, and when I was in London going to a couple of mosques and then when I was in Istanbul, I just took it with me and put it on over my clothes every single time. Now that I've been to a mosque a little bit more and especially now like it's coming into like winter season here in the UK, so you know, you're you're wearing full dresses and outfits anyway, like I haven't really worn it because I'm more confident in myself in what I'm wearing to the mosque. And like I just said, there's so many, a range of different outfits that women wear. But just to start with, I was really pleased I did just get that abaya because then I put the abaya on, it's a black full length abaya, at like you, can't, you literally can't go wrong <laughs> because is a black full length abaya. <laughs> so I would recommend something like that if you are just a little bit nervous. And then when it comes to hijab, you know, what I make sure I really try and do, because when I pray at home, I wear a prayer dress. So it's like an all in one and I don't have to worry about it slipping or anything like that. But weirdly enough, like women don't really wear prayer dresses like that they would wear at home in the mosque, I found, which kind of did surprise me. But anyways, um, you know, you will have to wear a hijab and, you know, a scarf hijab like this. You know, if I was to go to pray now, it's all gonna fall forward. And when you're in the middle of the mosque, you're next to people, like, it's just, it's not really ideal. <laughs> so from trial and error from myself, you know, I realized that I just kind of wrap it round a few more times or kind of tie it back here, knot it at the back. Um, maybe just have a run through when you're at home. And what I've also found, if you really, really, really struggle with hijab um, and under caps and keeping it on and not showing your hair and things, is that the two-in-one hijabs are really good. So I'm gonna leave a link below and just put a photo here um, of Sarabi. They've cut some two-in-one hijabs. And I wore that a couple of times when I went to the mosque earlier this year, um, when I really wasn't confident with hijab and how to keep it on and anything like that. And that really helped me. Um, so just little things like that, like maybe sound silly, but I feel like it's worth looking into and making sure that you are comfortable in yourself and how you look and how you're presented um, before you go to the mosque. Because the last thing, you're already nervous about going to the mosque, you know, thinking if people are gonna stare at you, which to be fair, they're probably not. And anyway, no one should be thinking negatively or anything because you're all Muslims and you're going to the mosque. <laughs> um, but I think just, you know, knowing that you feel well dressed in yourself and and you know in a correct manner for Islam and as a Muslim in yourself will then help you when you're in the mosque at least it's one less thing to worry about I guess so I hope that you've enjoyed this video I know it's been like a little bit rambly actually I think the lighting of this video has also been terrible because <laughs> UK weather right now is one minute it's cloudy pouring it down with rain the next minute it's sunny so the light has just changed so many times whilst I've been making this video so apologies for that but if you have liked this video then please give it a thumbs up make sure you're following me on instagram if you're not already and subscribed on here as well and then i will see you in my next video inshallah